The FL Studio demo sucks, but it's good at being a demo. It allows you to try the software out, but you can't save projects in a normal way, and the VSTs cut out every few minutes. Honestly, in my opinion, these restrictions are too intrusive if you're trying to actually learn the software. So unsurprisingly, many people end up pirating it because they want to actually give it a try without having to leave it open 24-7. But today, I'm going to tell you why you should actually buy FL Studio, coming from somebody who's used it for two years. Let's take a look. Welcome to Top Spec, your one-stop shop for tech content. I'd like to start this video off by saying that ImageLine did not force us to make this video. After a few years of trying out their software, I decided to purchase it legitimately and noticed a whole host of benefits. Was that good? No, do it again. FL Studio's business model bewilders me in a good way because it is insanely pro-consumer. You purchase FL once and you both get the software and updates for it indefinitely. Being a professional piece of software, this is extremely uncommon and honestly is the biggest reason to legitimately buy it. If this doesn't stand out to you as much as it does to me, think about other DAWs such as Logic and Ableton, which work on different business models. Sure, you buy them once, but you still have to pay for most major updates. There are obviously exceptions to this, such as the smaller incremental updates between major versions, which tend to be free, but you still get the point. So with all of this in mind, FL having free lifetime updates and no subscription-based model might sound too good to be true, but it isn't. ImageLine does not skimp on providing major updates as frequently as possible and maintaining a high quality of life for its consumers. FL Studio 20 the most recent major update added massive features such as macOS support, the ability to work with multiple time signatures, native MIDI to audio conversion, and countless others. It also introduced Flex to all versions of FL, which is honestly one of my favorites since built into the program. It has over 1400 great presets, a pretty decent user interface, and tons of customization. So if you have a pirated version of FL Studio, you'll have to seek out these major updates every couple years, which is no easy task, and even then, you'll still be missing out on valuable bug fixes and small updates every once in a while. You also can't beat the reliability of actually owning the software and not having to deal with pirated software's kinks. <laughs> FL Studio has four editions that you can purchase. Fruity Edition, Producer Edition, Signature Edition, and the All Plugins Bundle. Now having multiple editions isn't a feature that is exclusive to FL. Ableton does something similar, but the thing that makes FL stand out is that it has more value-oriented mid-range options such as the Producer Edition and the Signature Edition. These only cost an extra $100 and $200 respectively on top of the base Fruity Edition, Whereas when you go with Ableton, it costs an extra $400 for the standard edition instead of the intro edition. All this being said, today's video is not focusing on whether FL or Ableton is more worth your money. The point is that you are free to gauge which features you think are essential and purchase the appropriate edition instead of just shelling out the $900 for the edition that includes all of the plugins. You're also free to pick up additional plugins and VSTs a la carte. Personally, I got the signature edition and I also opted to get Sakura since I make use of that in my workflow, and I'm also considering getting Effector in the future as well. The last point I'd like to make is that you are free to upgrade to higher editions at any time if you'd like, you just have to pay the difference between your current edition and the edition you'd like to upgrade to. For example, if you mistakenly purchase the Fruity Edition, which doesn't allow you to record audio or even work with audio clips in the playlist, you are free to upgrade to the Producer Edition or the Signature Edition at a reduced cost. So long story short, you shouldn't have to overthink which edition you'd like to buy since you can upgrade at any time. Just don't buy Fruity Edition. Don't do it. Unless you're like producing really simple EDM music or something, but even then, I don't think I'd recommend it to you. Pirating in general is not a legal practice and can result in serious consequences if you are caught. So even if you don't take morals into account, if you use FL Studio to create music that you release on all platforms, ImageLine will eventually chase you down. Since their software is so heavily cracked, they are notorious for coming after small artists and producers and even YouTubers who don't legally purchase FL. I'm not saying this just to try and scare you, 
they can easily look up your full name in their system and figure out whether you have a license attached to it or not. Case in point, YouTuber Curtis King. He's made several videos about this, but I'll save you the time. He used a cracked version of FL, got caught for it, then used a friend's copy, and then got caught for it again. Don't fuck with ImageLine. This leads me to the morals of the situation. As I've said, ImageLine is a very pro-consumer company. They provide consistent lifetime updates for a one-time purchase, curate great content on YouTube for video tutorials that showcase new features, and they even have a forum. To preserve this great ecosystem that they have going, they rely on people to actually purchase their software, so even if you're satisfied with whatever edition you've pirated, you should consider supporting them. What they have going is really rare, so consider dropping down a couple hundred dollars and never worrying about it again. FL Studio is a great DAW that provides heavy value and consistent lifetime updates. So in my opinion, you should support the great things that they do and purchase the appropriate edition for your use case. This is the internet after all though, so I am aware that I am only going to be swaying a portion of you to go out and buy FL, but I do recommend that you eventually purchase it, especially if you plan on releasing music on all platforms. That's going to do it for today though, I hope you enjoyed the video. We have all sorts of other music production related content on the channel, including MIDI keyboard reviews and even a review on the AKG K240 Studio headphones. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week.